Waveform Free 12 is out at last. And a lot of you have been waiting an awful long time for this. And it's been well worth the wait because it's full of lovely things. And the first thing is the audio setup is right here on the welcome page. So as many of you know already, Waveform works for all three of the major operating systems. So whether you work on Linux, Windows or Mac, you're covered. If you're on Linux like me, you've got Jack or you've got Pipewire. You're just going to be setting that up here and all the back end of it is going to be done on your operating system itself. And a lot of this other stuff is going to happen automatically. You set output to system, input system, and that should have you set up. If you're on Windows, you're going to work with ASIO drivers. There's two types of ASIO drivers. One is the one that will come with your audio interface. If you have one, you go to the website of the audio interface that you've got, and it'll probably have an ASIO driver download. Audio interface is basically the thing that you plug your instrument or your mic into, and a USB out of it into your computer, and it just translates one thing to the other. If you don't have an audio interface, don't worry, because there's another ASIO driver called ASIO for All, and that's really handy as well. So check that one out. If you're on Mac, you don't need to worry about any of it because the audio system that's on a Mac, there's one type of audio drivers, and you're just going to set that one up, whichever one is there when you click on it. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. If you're on Windows or Mac, by the way, then this sample rate and audio buffer size are things that you do have to set up in waveform itself. You'll notice that I've got 48,000 hertz. That's just because I'm making videos, and that's a good audio rate for videos. The next thing that you want to do is, if you want to record audio into waveform, click New Project. You can select a template if you want. I usually don't because I like the default settings. I like to customize it each one that i make you can make your own templates if you want i haven't done it yet but it's something that i will get around to doing and when i'm going to be doing it to demonstrate to you how to do it then i'll make a few handy ones for myself anyway because it, there are a few ideas that i want in a default template and you create a name up there just type in whatever name you want create project and that's it so here's one that i created called guitar and next thing you want to do is set your audio so I've got Capture 1 or Capture 2. So let's plug a guitar in. And you can see the, the levels jumping up and down there when I play. And you don't want to have them too high. You can set your gain control here on your interface. There's a, a gain control which will raise or lower your audio amount. So the next thing we want to do is click on that. That arms the track. If you've got several different instruments going into your audio interface, then it's just the ones that you arm that are going to be recording. So just imagine like you're recording a bass and a drummer at the same time, and you don't want all the drum mics to be to have to unplug every time. It's just the ones that get armed. If your bass is playing and your drums aren't, you don't arm the drum tracks. So you arm the track and then you hit record. If we want to record with a metronome, which is a handy thing, then there's a little metronome icon here. It is useful if you're going to be adding MIDI stuff into it later, or if you just want to keep good time as you play. Uh, use headphones, though. You don't want the sound of the metronome bleeding into your recorded track. It'll give you a little count in, and then off you go. If you want to add another track, and play along with the track that you've created already, then you can do that very easily. What we'll do is we'll make this capture one. It's not capture one up there anymore. We'll arm this track and then let's turn off the metronome because that was a little bit slow and um, I wasn't really thinking about it. I think if I was to record that particular type of music, then I'd probably go slightly faster. That's all you've got to do. Now, I noticed that the second track that I put up there wasn't quite as loud as the first track, probably because they're high strings and because I wasn't playing as hard. So we can bring the gain up on that track. I just clicked on that little button there. This is the gain of that track. We can bring it up a bit like that. Let's go back and see. I can pull this down to see the waveform better. An alternative to that is to go in here to Effects, Add Clip Effect, Normalize. 
and that'll bring everything up to its fullest. And we'll do the same with this one, we'll normalize. Then both of them will be kind of at the max. So let's see what effects have come. One thing that you definitely want to do is um, use a reverb on stuff like that because it just things always sound better with reverb. So utility first, and let's do uh, aux send. And then if we hold control and grab that and bring it down here, then we just create another one of them down there in that track. Usually down at the bottom, we would create an aux return. It's in waveform utilities, aux return. And after the aux return, we put in an effect. So you can see all of these effects. They're all there in waveform free now. And we'll delve into them deeper at a later stage. Let's just do a plate reverb. And that's way too small. It's not normally that small. <laughs> I've just um, put in a new graphics card into this computer and I've changed my screen resolution up to 4K and not everything is happy about it. I may have to go back to 1440p. <laughs> So that's a nice sounding plate. What's going on here, the, these here, you can change the amount of each track that gets sent. And they both can use the same reverb. So particularly if you've got a, a system that doesn't have a huge, a huge amount of processing power, having one reverb there and sending things in at different amounts is the best idea. When you do that, make sure that your mix of your reverb is up to the top and use these for controlling the amount of reverb that goes into them. So you right click in the place. Let's put some chorus onto one of them. You can put an EQ in as well. You've now got a choice of EQs, one band, three band, eight band. And the eight band is very like the EQ that used to come in Waveform Pro. If you want to know more about the reverbs, I'm going to do a video exploring those very soon. And more videos about all the other effects too. Waveform Free 11 had me impressed. And uh, this is worlds apart. This has added all of the things that were in DAW Essentials, which, you know, it was uh, a sad situation that DAW Essentials was a, a paid add-on. All of these effects that we've been looking for, you know, these are kind of the meat and potatoes of creating music. Suddenly now we have all the effects we need. Oh, you've got this other browser too. So we're going to waveform here and effects. Got them all there. So EQs, chorus, compressor, delay, distortion, another kind of EQ, a filter, gate, a limiter, MIDI chord player, MIDI modifier, natural reverb, non-linear reverb, phaser, pitch shifter, plate reverb, volume and pan. And I've come to really love this setup. I don't know what more to say there is. Get creating. Enjoy yourself. I'll see you soon.